I know y'all done got on us about the uh, spoiler alerts for Malcolm and Marie. We can't spoil alert something that really fucking happened. So I just want to throw that out. This entire movie is based on a uh, on the true story of, of Fred Hampton. And mm-hmm. so whatever we're about to say now, you can go to Wikipedia and see how the movie ends. This isn't, you know. Or Google. Or, or Google how anything. See like, how his life actually ends. This, this is part. based on a true story. I do want to uh, first lead into, I, I think the movie was wonderful. The cinematography was great. Um, I appreciated it for that. I also really enjoy watching these black British actors play monumental African-American leaders. Mm, do you? I do. I really do. Oh, you love to... to I to, do. You, she loves because to have unpopular opinions. That's a, I, am gonna, I am going to stir the pot. Please. Because we, we always talk about the fact that we don't amplify enough black male actors. We don't talk about how we we don't we the every all of the roles that we see usually get sent to the same handful right, um, and that's not that's not to take away from the the directors and screenplay writers like the Ryan Kuglers and the Spike Lees who deliberately find black actors to play in their in their films and participate in their storytelling, but I I do think it's very interesting that. Daniel Kaluuya, and I have to find the other gentleman's name. I'm going to look it up right now, actually. Who plays um, Martin Luther King in Selma? I cannot remember how to pronounce his last name. And I, I, I want to let wrong. you get this off about him before. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, I think it's, I think it's interesting. And I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying watching David Oyelowo. I'm going to, I don't want to, I don't want I'm already messing it up. Oyelowo. David Oyelowo. Okay. Oyelowo. 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 Yeah, David Oyelowo. Oyelowo. <laughs> it's a tongue twister for me. I apologize to David. I apologize to that man. But yes, I, it's it's interesting to me that we have we have these conversations right about Hollywood and how we don't amplify enough of our own voices. And I think I think it's just very interesting. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just an observation I'm making that we are we are watching these incredible. Um, you know, British British black actors play um, our African American heroes. I think that's that's very interesting. There's something to be said, and I'm wondering. Lakeith like Stansfield did a did a phenomenal job too. He can do no wrong in my eyes ever. But um, here's, I just I just think it's I think it's interesting. I do think it's interesting. It's interesting, but here's my problem. Mm-hmm. Here's my problem with this. And again, beautiful beautiful movie, beautiful story. I love that we're learning so much more about our black history because it's not taught specifically y'all talk about how I really don't be knowing a lot of shit blame Florida public school system um but outside of that blame Florida yeah just just blame Florida (laughs) you know a Florida man no but my problem with even Daniel taking this Mm -hmm. and I understand the think pieces surrounding people not happy or pleased with him playing this because I want to I want to bring up because there is a parallel between this and Queen and Slim um Mm -hmm. basically when when that movie came out these are this is a quote from Daniel Kaluuya what is there to talk about race it's just boring to me what's the debate I'm more of a doer. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And he has spoken out about not wanting to be a voice for black actors. Mm. He doesn't want that. And my problem with this, to be very fair, and again, when I watch movies, I look into the history. I read. I watch YouTubes. I read think pieces. I really enjoyed what this meant. And I'm reading. The problem is the African-American story is not like that of black people elsewhere. And so for this to be so monumental so monumental and meaningful as far as what it means for our history as African Americans to have someone sit here and play a role where he's literally came out and said I don't want to speak about race, I don't care about race, I don't I don't want to be that black actor that plays only these race roles and then to take some a role like this I will also say as far as how I perceive the movie to be right now, not only with what we've endured over the last year, but I want to go back all the way to when this took place Mm -hmm. in the 60s and and 70s and 80s. And I mean, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, 
there's so much trauma that lies there that he is, he's sitting here benefiting off of a history that he said he didn't even really want no parts of. He doesn't want to speak for, and yet you're taking this role. But more so, what bothers me about this, and I want to bring it back to Queen and Slim, Lakeith Stanfield's character. Mm -hmm. We we know that we have the fight against white supremacy. Mm -hmm. We have the fight against, and it's funny because... uh, even in his role, and, and I'm talking about Fred Hampton's speech, where he was like, you can you can kill the revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution. Mm-hmm. You can kill the freedom fighter, but you can't kill freedom. Right. And uh, again, watching this, I hate that a lot of the emphasis was that our own people don't unite with us. The same way we, we make a joke about feminism. Not even a joke, but we talk about fem- feminism in a way that there still are so much cracks in unity. Mm-hmm. That's what I felt with this movie. The cracks within our own unity as black people. And even, even so much so that the actor that's playing this role right. is like, I don't see race. I don't want to talk about race. But also the yeah. fact that there's another scene in here where you have a member of the Black Panther Party going to the home of another black man that worked in the hospital where his where his friend was killed. Mm-hmm. And he's like, brother, help me. And this black man looks at him and is like, I'm not your brother. And calls the police. And calls the police on him. And so... A part of the frustration in watching these films is we know the fight against white supremacy. And what kills me is that we still have so many holes and cracks and fights within our own community, even to see that the Black Panther Party had to join forces with the Crowns, this other party of, Mm -hmm. of, of activists that were fighting for black rights, but still within each other. You saw the first scene of them and engaging as a gun to, to, it's frustrating to me. It was so frustrating to me because I feel like also viewing this movie. Yeah. And where it took place. We are not far off from there. 40, 50 years later. Like, right. it's frustrating. It's frustrating well, it's, because when the fuck are we go? When is it going to yeah. change? I don't know. This was, this was, it was a great movie, yeah, but it was full of hurt and it was a frustrating movie. I just, I find it to be interesting that this is, and it's not to say that as actors, they're not qualified to play these roles. I just find it interesting that even, even in the portrayal of some of, of an African-American hero and and monuments because I will I will go so far as to say Fred Hampton was a monument absolutely and a pillar and a a a rock in and in, in in every African American's history and I think that for us to to be able to watch that and it and it and it be you know it be it be given to an actor that's not from here from that here doesn't right. necessarily understand this and I won't say he doesn't understand the significance but I will say that it's just different. It's just do you different. Want, do you want to bring it real back? You want to go to even the chaos surrounding Selena, a Mexican, being played by a JLo, Lo, a Puerto Rican. Like you, you're you not going to get what, what really my fight, my struggle, all of that was. And there was a lot of conversation regarding the fact that why couldn't you find a Mexican-American to play Selena? Right. Why did you have to go to J-Lo? Like, so uh, again, this is a conversation that, that, that's been had. And I, I do love too, because you have women like even Zendaya, who's saying, I know that Zendaya. I can't. Zendaya. Sorry. Is it Zendaya? <laughs> Zendaya. Damn. God damn it. It is. Look, let me just fuck up everything. No. But <laughs> even her saying, I don't want to play roles in which I know I can't speak to what the Listen, actual I got you know I got sent I got I've gotten sent auditions twice it's happened to me where I've gotten sent auditions to play somebody Hispanic and I was like no <laughs> really no you need to find someone Hispanic to play this do you even know Spanish yeah but enough to get by but I'm not again this is if we're talking about representation right and the importance of representation you can't just pick any old person that that looks the part. Right. I agree. That's not fair. You I know agree. what I'm saying? We're actually, it, that's the same thing as when we have conversations about LGBTQ+. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's to, it's to, it's to create the space for that, for that story and that narrative to be told as it is, as it has been lived. And I think that's, that's something that's worth the conversation. I agree. I, I will say if, if you guys do have the time, definitely check it out. Um, we're probably yeah. gonna get ripped for that, but it is what it is. No, I, th- you think they're gonna ri- they who might. gonna get ripped? They, they, they gonna rip you. They, like I just well, here's ugh. the thing because I don't. I'm not. Oh, shit. I'm not anti. I think I just I I do find it interesting, and I would implore our audience to to you know come. I mean, give me some give me give me some feedback on that because I don't. I'm not. I don't have an objection to it. I think it's just 
I, in watching in watching it this weekend, I thought to myself, this is an incredible portrayal. It's incredible oh, yeah, he did acting. a great job. Yeah, but just that, you know, it still goes back to my, my theory about Hollywood that we always pick from the same handful of black actors. Mm. And it's always the same handful that get p- picked and cast for roles. And it shouldn't be limited to the the same five, ten people that we see that played the same thing. And I, I remember saying that even, rest in peace, Chadwick. Right. I remember feeling that way when he played Jackie Robinson and James Brown. Like, I remember feeling like he's an amazing actor, but there are so many amazing uh, black actors. And he actors. also played... Who else did he uh, play? Damn, give me the the lawyer... Marshall, uh, Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall. He also played he Thurgood played Marshall. He played Thurgood Marshall, James Brown, and Jackie Robinson. Now that, you mean now that you say that, that sounds the same fucking actor? crazy. Like, <laughs> Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hollywood. Like, y'all, come on. You know what I mean? And right. granted, it's not to say anything about the men's act, acting skills. It really is just a testament to the fact that the way that thought is put into and consideration is put into who would play Margaret Thatcher or who, by the way, was also, I mean, they... Margaret Thatcher was also somebody that was I think I believe it was Meryl Streep who played Margaret Thatcher and she's British so we can we can say the same thing right. about America too. Right. Um yeah, like the way that thought is put into ha- casting other other people to play um you know Leonardo DiCaprio as J Edgar Hoover. You know what I mean? Thinking about that, that was that was very well thought out and very well cast. I think things like that are considered differently than how we have cast our, our black films and I just think that's something to, something to think about I agree it's something to think about definitely check out uh, the movie I will say it's a lot 